The following material is supplied by Audio Features Incorporated and is not the responsibility of Associated Press Radio. The material supplied on this feed is available for unrestricted use at no charge by all stations on the AP Radio line. This is the Audio Features feed for Friday, August 7th, 1981. There are three spots. Spot one is some tips for using your freezer in the summer and runs 1 minute and 21 seconds. Spot two concerns a new improved wetsuit and runs 1 minute and 4 seconds. Spot three concerns a new method of planning parenthood and runs 58 seconds. Spot one in three, two, one. In summer, when a great many foods tend to spoil, You might give more than just casual thought to that great mid-20th century innovation, the freezer. It's also good for more than just preserving perishables. Ortho's book, 12 Months Harvest, offers the following tips on using your freezer. Candles, when frozen, will keep their shape longer, will burn brighter, and won't drip. You can freeze leftover coffee into coffee cubes to use in iced coffee. This way, your iced coffee won't get lukewarm and will not get diluted as the ice melts. If you tend to lose patience trying to crack a tough nut, try freezing. Shelled nuts open much more easily after having been frozen. If you want to keep brown sugar and marshmallows fresh and soft, freeze them. Stuffed baked potatoes individually wrapped for reheating freeze well, as do cabbage rolls, chilies, curries, and most casseroles. If you have any leftover meat, try cubing the meat and putting it in the freezer for use at some later date in a meat pie. And if you freeze baked products, use pure vanilla for a better, fresher taste. Ortho advises the artificial varieties sometimes allows the cakes or pastries to develop an off flavor. This is Gary Alexander. Spot 2 in 3, 2, 1. A Washington State wetsuit maker has recently had a new design tested in which suited volunteers floated in a pool frosted with several tons of ice for six hours. The subjects were constantly monitored by medical personnel to find out whether or not the suits were effective in preventing subnormal body temperature or hypothermia caused by freezing conditions. As it turned out, The suit's designer, Harvey Groh, said there was not a variance of more than one and a half degrees in the core temperature of the body. According to Groh, the key factor in the success of the suit was buoyancy, because at any given time, at least one quarter of the body was above the water's surface. Air is about 25 times slower in conducting heat out of the body than is water. So far, only the military has been using water survival suits, along with merchant seamen, but they may soon be on board civilian passenger transports, especially if new legislation requires them. This is Gary Alexander. Spot 3 in 3, 2, 1. A device called the Fertilitron may soon make an appearance on the market. The unit, which is still to be tested, is about the size of a watch and will hopefully monitor the slight changes that take place in a woman's body during ovulation so that by checking the fertilitron she'll be able to tell when conditions are favorable to her becoming pregnant. The device being developed by Intersonics Incorporated, a New York firm, would actually be pressed against the woman's wrist and would in turn give a reading from a micro circuit sensor. Depending on how the watch reads the woman's condition, fertile or infertile, a green or a red light would be flashed. Meanwhile, the president of Intersonics says another unit is also in the making, and it may be ready this year. It also monitors the minute changes that occur in a woman during certain times of the month, but this device has a different purpose. It's called Safe Time. This is Gary Alexander. Spot 